Thank you uh, to uh, the Special Assistant to the President for Investment and Economic Affairs, Secretary Frederick Go. Your Excellency, uh, the President of the Republic of Korea, President Yoon Suk Yeol. Ambassador of the Republic of Korea to the Philippines, His Excellency Lee sang Wan. Agriculture Secretary Francis Chu Laurel. Trade and Industry Acting Secretary Maria Cristina Aldeguer Roque. Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, President Enunina Manjo. The Federation of Korea Industries uh, Chairman, uh, Jin Roy Ryu. Fellow workers in government, our partners in the private sector, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I shall attempt a greeting in Korean. Your Rubun Anyung Hashim Nika. The Philippines-Korea Business Forum stands as a testament to a partnership that is as enduring as it is dynamic. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to His Excellency Yoon suk Yeol for gracing us with his presence today. Your unwavering commitment to strengthening the bonds between our two nations, our two nations is very inspiring. And so as we gather today, it is evident that our, our ties are built on shared values and the shared vision for a vibrant and prosperous economic partnership. The deep connection that we have built, one that spans not just trade and commerce, but culture and friendship, solidifies our alliance. I am sure with Korean restaurants sprouting out around the Philippines, Filipinos have at least once shared stories and have laughed over some kimchi, some samgyeopsal with friends and with family. And of course, the countless hours that we have spent binge watching our favorite Korean dramas and listening to K-pop. These highlight how the Filipinos love Koreans and your culture. Similarly, with over one million Koreans coming to visit the Philippines tourist attractions last year, I can see that many Koreans also love everything that is Filipino. As we celebrate 75 years of diplomatic relations, we stand on the cusp of an exciting new chapter where our continued collaboration will pave the way for more mutual prosperity and growth. Of course, I cannot overlook the remarkable efforts of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Federation of Korean Industries for jointly organizing this forum with the support of the Department of Trade and Industry. Under the dynamic and inspiring leadership of PCCI President Enunina Manjo and FKI Chairman Jin Roy Ryu, key stakeholders from both our countries, were brought together to share their insights and embark on exciting new journeys of collaboration. Each of you, 12 Philippine and 12 Korean companies and organizations bring a wealth of experience and expertise. Your presence symbolizes the cooperation that propels us towards a shared success. The business to business agreements that we've signed today, encompassing sectors such as infrastructure, public private partnerships, energy, and affordable housing, are a clear indication of the enthusiasm and commitment of our private sectors. To our partners from Korea, you have shown that business is in your blood. Investing in the Philippines at this opportune time is a fine strategic move. In the first half of 2024, the Philippines experienced a remarkable growth of 6%. It solidifies the Philippines' position as one of the fastest growing economies in the region. Foreign direct investment also remains strong with net inflows of almost 9% billion dollars last year. These achievements reflect our success in implementing business-friendly reforms. We are dismantling bureaucratic barriers, lowering the cost of doing business, and enhancing our global competitiveness. To our esteemed Korean partners, I want to assure you, the Philippine government stands ready to embrace your investments with open arms and with a continuing and unwavering support. We are continuously finding ways to make the Philippines a more conducive place to do business. 
We are accelerating policy reforms designed to improve the business environment here. The enactment of the PPP or Public-Private Partnership Code of the Philippines is a prime example of this initiative. It paves the way for transformative collaborations between government and the private sector that drive infrastructure development across our archipelago. Better roads, better bridges, and public facilities through private sector investments, connecting not only our islands, but more importantly, connecting our people. Furthermore, our enactment of the Internal Transactions Act provides a robust framework for a vibrant digital economy that meets the demands of the 21st century. This empowers our entrepreneurs and our consumers by regulating e-commerce, ensuring legitimate business transactions, and preventing fraud. We are also very proud of the Tatak Pinoy Act, which aims to bolster industry development and enhance the Philippines' integration into global value chains. This initiative guarantees that our local industries are flourishing on the international stage. When we support our homegrown businesses, we strengthen our economy and build a more resilient future for our communities. And we're not yet done. Congress is at the last stages of the legislative process to enact the corporate recovery and tax incentives for enterprises to maximize opportunities for reinvigorating the economy or the Create More Act. Anchored on the Create Act of 2021, it will further strengthen our fiscal and non-fiscal incentives in strategic industries. Amongst its key improvements are the simplification of the approval process, streamlining of the value-added tax refund system, and the enhancement of tax incentives to align with global standards. Through key policy reforms and measures such as these, we aim to make the Philippines a top destination for sustainability and to be sustainable in our strategic investments. As we leverage our strategic location and engage in international agreements like the ASEAN-Korea Free Trade Agreement and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, we are actively pursuing our regional economic integration agenda. The recently ratified Philippines-Korea Free Trade Agreement elevates our relations by reducing and or eliminating tariffs on key products such as agricultural goods, electronics, and automotive components. This FDA prioritizes cooperation in sectors of mutual interest, such as electric vehicles, processing of critical minerals, pharmaceuticals, and creative industries. But beyond policies and numbers, what truly enriches our relationship is a vibrant tapestry of our people-to-people -people connections. This is the essence of true partnership, the ability to support one another as we ascend toward our shared goals, moving forward together with resolve, resilience, and the spirit of camaraderie. Let us strive to cultivate not only economic growth, but also a flourishing community where every Filipino and Korean feels the positive impact of our collaboration. Together, let history record that this was the moment when our two nations embarked upon a journey of unprecedented growth and prosperity. Thank you for your participation, for your passion, your commitment to this journey. I look forward to what we can achieve together in the years ahead. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat. Thank you, President. And next is from Senior Economic Affairs Secretary Park chun sub who will introduce the next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, as a Senior Economic Affairs Secretary, it's my great honor to introduce the President of the Republic of Korea, Yoon Song-yeol. Thank you.
Please welcome with a big round of applause. Honorable Your Excellency President, Marcos Jr. of the Republic of Philippines, my fellow business leaders of the two nations, Asia and Pacific region has been connected through the gated city Manila called the Pearl of the East, and I'm delighted to have today's Korea-Philippines Business Forum here today. Korea and the Philippines have a very special connection. The Philippines was the very first ASEAN country which established a diplomatic tie with Korea. In 1949, the dipl diplomatic tie was made. And next year, the Korean War broke out. And during the Korean War, before any other Asian nation, the largest number of expansionary uh, forces was dispatched, proving that Philippines is not just a long-standing friendly nation, but a strong ally. Safeguarding free democracy together, we have developed our economy while building a close cooperation. Korean companies invested in flagship industries of the Philippines, such as electronics, shipbuildings, or semiconductor, contributing to its economic growth and job creation. Trade platforms including Korean ASEAN FTA and Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership or RCEP enabled Korea to expand its trade and to become the fifth largest partner to the Philippines. Thanks to your active business activities, we are now expanding the scope of cooperation across the economy and society from defense to cultural contents. My fellow business leaders, this year is special as it marks the 50, I mean, 75th anniversary of the diplomatic ties between the two. The Philippines is a key partner for Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy and Korean ASEAN Solidarity Initiative. In the morning summit today, we agreed to upgrade the relation to strategic partnership. This alleviation, I mean, elevation is a chance for us to build a stronger strategic economic cooperation. First and foremost, we will work together to bring so-called the age of nuclear renaissance to advance high-tech industries through a stable power supply and to achieve carbon neutrality at the same time, nuclear is a must. For this reason, the Philippines has begun its preparation to bring nuclear back. The recently concluded Batang An Feasibility Test MOU is expected to be an enabler for us to initiate a full-fledged nuclear cooperation. I do not doubt that the Team Korea Consortium is an ideal partner for also the Philippines. Second, the bilateral infrastructure cooperation is already vibrant, yet has ample potential to grow more. The Philippines has been implementing large infra uh, infrastructure projects such as Build Back More or BBM to support its flagship infrastructure programs, Korea decided to provide finance through Economic Development Cooperation Fund, or EDCF. First, the fund will finance 900 billion for Laguna Lakeshore Road Network and over 1 billion for PG and Ocean Bridge projects. I believe that we can see a greater contribution of Korean businesses to the expansion of the infrastructure in the Philippines, including road and bridges. Third, we will strengthen critical raw mineral supply chain cooperation. The Philippines is a resource-rich country. In particular, its nickel production is the second largest. 
Given that Korea has advanced high-tech industries including semiconductor and battery, as well as excellent material technologies, we can build a wider spread and extensive supply chain cooperation. The signing of Supply Chain Cooperation MOU will be a basis for enhanced cooperation to jointly explore clear critical minerals, develop relevant technologies, and provide mutual support in case of supply chain interruptions. Also, for the implementation of IPATH Supply Chain Agreement, the Crisis Response Network, or CRN, was formed, and Korea was appointed as the first chair of the body. I wish that this platform can also bring us closer. Finally, I cannot leave without mentioning the Agriculture Corporation. Recently, the concern is growing over food security due to the expansion of geopolitics political risk and increasing frequency of extreme weather events. We already back in 2018 concluded the Agricultural Cooperation MOU and have been engaged in close cooperation for seed, smart farm and rural development programs. Going forward, a larger cooperation will be made to boost productivity in the field of pesticide, fertilizers, and agriculture machinery. I will work together so that the Korea Agriculture Machinery Compl Complex can be constructed at the earliest possible time. This construction is expected to contribute to the development and distribution of machinery befitting local conditions and varieties, I believe. My fellow business leaders, last year data shows that the number of arrivals from Korea was the largest in the Philippines. I heard that not just travelers but business people also frequently travel between the two nations. 200 years ago, a Korean merchant met a storm, drifted, and managed to reach the Filipino soil, and locals helped the merchant safely go back home according to an old record. I believe that this old connection explains why the Philippines is a preferred destination for Koreans. On this visit, I also received warm hospitality and felt deep friendship from Filipinos. Korea and the Philippines will continue to join forces to uphold the values of democracy and market economy and obtain mutual prosperity through cooperation. My fellow business leaders, this gathering is of great significance. I hope that we can build a deeper friendship and widen cooperation taking this opportunity. Thank you so much.